Morning, here I come. Hello, sports fans, sports collectors, and all hobbyists. Welcome to the Card King Sports and Variety Show. I am your host, the Catman, Brian Cataquit, a.k.a. the Card King. We are live on ABC's KMET, 1490am.com, your number one spot right here for news and talk on the West Coast. I thank everyone for tuning in this morning. On the telephone line, I welcome to the program a former Major League Baseball outfielder who played nine seasons during the 1960s for the Cardinals, Cubs, and the Phillies. I welcome in uh, Doug Clemens. Doug, Brian C., thanks so much for your time this morning. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be with you. I'm, I'm living in the Philadelphia area now, and it's a little colder here than it is probably where you are, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to be on the radio show with you. Oh, this is great. Always an honor to speak with a professional athlete, Doug. So, Doug, uh, your athletic ability was proven early on uh, during your high school years, uh, making all county as a football halfback and later uh, going to the Syracuse University where you landed a football scholarship at the same school where the great Jim Brown was at. Is that correct? That's correct. I, I went there in 1958. Jimmy graduated in 57 and uh, was, a, uh, I think, a three-time All-American in uh, in football, but also a great, great uh, lacrosse player. He was three-time All-American in lacrosse, so he had a wonderful career and perhaps the very finest uh, running back of all time in the NFL. Uh, so, no. I, and Another fellow that was a classmate of mine was uh, Ernie Davis, the great Ernie Davis, who won the Heisman Trophy in, uh, I believe it was 1961. Yeah, no question about it. Now, did you ever cross paths with Jimmy Brown? I met him one time. Uh, I was being recruited, and I met Jimmy Brown in the uh, coach's uh, office. And the coach was the uh, legendary Ben Schwartzwalder at that time. Uh, he took Syracuse to some of its finest years, uh, winning the national, excuse me, the uh, the college uh, NCAA championship uh, against uh, Texas in uh, 1961. Excuse me, 1959. 59. Wow. And from what I understand, football was uh, short-lived after you had a knee injury. However, because of your baseball ability, uh, you got to play for Syracuse in 59 and 60 in the, on the baseball team, right? That's, that's correct. I, I was very fortunate. Uh, I had knee surgery in high school and then uh, still recruited for Syracuse University and more knee surgery uh, my freshman year. And I determined that I, I think maybe I had a a, college, a a professional career in baseball. So they switched my scholarship to baseball, and uh, I played there and through my junior year and then turned professional. I was playing with my college roommate, Dave Justy, uh, who later signed with the uh, Houston Colts, Colt 45s, and was a star for uh, 14 or 15 years. Uh, but I ended up uh, signing uh, with the St. Louis Cardinals uh, after my junior year, playing out of uh, the Basin League in South Dakota. We're talking with Doug Clemens, uh, who played during the 1960s for the Cardinals, Cubs, and Phillies, who's on the telephone line. Now, uh, Doug, the summer of 1960, you signed with the Cardinals. Uh, a couple of questions. How did the Cardinals uh, hear about you? Where exactly were you, if you recall, when you signed that contract and your experience with all that uh, with all that. Uh, you know, information, part of your life? Well, I was, uh, as, as uh, would be, it was my second year of, of playing out in uh, the Basin League, which is a very fast college league in, uh, in South Dakota. My first year out there uh, was in Mitchell, South Dakota, which is famous for the Corn Palace, of all things. And uh, then my second year, along with Dave Justy, my college roommate, we went and played in Watertown. Uh, because the coach we had was a former major leaguer by the name of Joe Lutz, a f big, big gangly first baseman for the St. Louis Browns in the old days. And uh, Joe was a, a bird dog, if you will, a scout at the same time he managed us in the, uh, in the Basin League. And he recommended me to uh, the Cardinals and a, a fellow by the name of Joe Monahan. Uh, inc uh, incidentally, Joe Monahan had one blue eye and one brown eye, so it was the only time I ever saw a person <laughs> with uh, one of each. But I, I, I signed there uh, in, uh, in Watertown, South Dakota, and I had a 52 Chevy that Dave and I had driven out to uh, South Dakota in for that year, and uh, lo and behold, they sent me to Billings, Montana. Well, I had never been as far as, uh, 
as far as South Dakota before, and lo and behold, now I'm going to Billings, Montana. But it was a, it was a great time. I got out to Billings, and uh, I, I, I was hitting 327 in the Basin League. I went out to uh, Billings, Montana for the last uh, about 40 games, I believe, and I hit 389. So uh, playing every day made a big difference for me. I mean, so, so this is back in, like, uh, the summer of 1960. I mean, junior year at Syracuse, right? The Cardinal Scout. Was it Benny Bergman or Benny Borgman who signed you? No, uh, it, was, uh, it was a guy by the name of Joe Monahan. Uh, Joe Monahan. Joe Monahan was the, uh, the scout that uh, came out to watch me play. Uh, and, uh, and then I had, to make a dec- I had to make a very difficult decision because I was on a full-ride scholarship to Syracuse, and I had one more year to go, or take the uh, ability, uh, the opportunity to turn professional and sign with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. And I, I also had uh, on my record a, a, a knee issue, because I had two knee surgeries by, them, by then. And uh, so I, I talked to my parents, and uh, my father was my high school coach, uh, in football and baseball, and uh, I determined that I would not only turn professional, but I would certainly go back and get my degree uh, in the two uh, fall semesters that followed. And I graduated in the fall of 62 uh, from Syracuse. So you must have got, a, you know, at that time, a decent uh, salary bonus uh, spread over, what, three, four years during that time? Uh, yeah, it was over a four-year period, I believe. I, I got $40,000 uh, as an incentive to, uh, to turn professional. So the first thing I did, like any young guy would do and who did not have any money growing up, I, I bought a new car, and I paid for my education. So those were, <laughs> those were good things. Those were positive things. And uh, I, I had an enjoyable uh, senior, which would have been my senior year at, at Syracuse. But I can still remember... Uh, the class of 61, the team at Syracuse, they ended up third in the nation. Dave Justy uh, led them to third in the nation in the College World Series. Uh, so I'm thinking, well, here I am. In, I was playing in uh, a, an away game uh, in uh, San Antonio after I had matriculated that following year to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was playing in an away game and sitting in San Antonio uh, thinking about uh, – my old teammates, uh, and here they were in the College World Series, and our, our center fielder from the Syracuse team had already also signed at the same time I did. So maybe with myself and the center fielder, we might have helped them over that little hurdle and maybe could have won the World Series, you know, the NCAA World Series. Oh, yeah, indeed, indeed. So if I'm adding up these years uh, correctly, uh, you were about 21 years old uh, when you broke into the big leagues, and your first stop was Billings, Montana, the Cardinals' pioneer minor league organization, where I got to tell you, I mean, you killed it that year. I mean, you hit close to 439 games, um, right? I mean, I mean, almost 439 games. Yes, and I, I think as... As it turns out, uh, I think I went one for eight the last uh, day on a doubleheader, or I would have been over 400. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, your stats in, in, in the minor league organizations, they, they were really solid. They were really phenomenal. So with, that, with those stats, I mean, hitting close to 400, that's what really uh, got attention to the, uh, to, the, to the big show, right, with the Cardinals. Yes, they. Uh, in fact, uh, after the season was over in the Pioneer League, and when I was in Billings, uh, they they had me come right to the big club, the St. Louis uh, Club, and uh, I sat on the bench for 21 days. Never got into a game until, lo and behold, the last day, the, uh, the uh, Johnny. You know, let's see, Sally Hemus was our manager. Do you remember that name, Sally Hemus? I, I do, and, I do, and, yep. And so we were in St. Louis, and, uh, excuse me, we were playing against the San Francisco Giants in San Francisco, and he put me in the last two innings, and uh, I probably made the best catch I've ever made in the outfield in my life during that game. I was playing right field, which is the sun field in Old Candlestick Park, and the wind was blowing out, and a, uh, the, the catcher for the San, San Francisco Giants hit a screaming line drive that was fading away from me, and 
I never used flip down glasses before. Same usual. Showed me how to use flip down glasses of all things. <laughs> and here I am in the outfield, and I die. I, I run over, and I, I dive, and I, I make a I make a good catch. So then I I got to bat the next inning, and uh, I had two strikes on me from a guy by the name of Mike McCormick, a left hand pitcher, yep. and Bill White. Uh, tried to steal second base. Uh, he got thrown out. And then Salahimus pinch hits for me in the top of the ninth inning, so I don't get an official at bat in my oh, major geez. league career. That was funny in that year. <laughs> so, so you mentioned Stan Musial, and I wanted to ask you. So the 60 Cardinals team, uh, you, know, you know, you had the Stan Musial. You also had Bob Gibson. How were those – any memories on those two uh, legendary athletes? Well, they were they were just great competitors. Stan was a, a wonderful man. Uh, it was near the end of his career. He retired in '63. I was there for his retirement. And Gibson was a great competitor. You know, Musial hit a lifetime 331. How do you do that? Oh, he was unbelievable. Uh, uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. And uh, Gibson, with his outstanding uh, uh, attitude and and uh, aggressiveness and nastiness, if you will, on the mound, he was really he was really tough and. Uh, a great competitor. We had Bill White. We had D- uh, Dick Grote. We had Kurt Flood was on that team, who later challenged the reserve clause in the in the major leagues, as you'll recall. And mm-hmm. uh, so we we did have a, a very fine club. So, so then we go over to uh, we'll go to the '61 season. Now '61, you're playing for the Tulsa Oilers in the Double A division of the Cardinals, and you, you, I mean, you did well. You you had a combined 12 homers leading that team with 28 doubles, also a batting average of 342 in 97 games. That's also the highest on the squad. So '61 at Tulsa, I, I, you know, it was a solid uh, year for you. It was. Uh, <clears throat> I went from Class C the following the previous year mm-hmm. for those 40, 39 games that I played for the Billings, Montana, to Cla- Double A, which was quite a jump, I think. But uh, the highlight of that year was uh, I buried my college sweetheart in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She, oh, uh, really? She and her family flew out. They, she was from Connecticut, and they flew out, and we got married uh, before I had to play a doubleheader that night. And uh, and it was quite uh, quite the uh, the wedding, the owner of our ball club gave us the uh, reception at the Southern Hills Country Club, which is uh, a very prominent country club in the country. And uh, it was lovely. It was, a, it was a wonderful experience and playing well. And then I got moved to Charleston, West Virginia, as you, you know. Wow, that's that's so that's really nice. Uh, so you know, you know, great memories at Tulsa, no no question. Now that that same year, sixty one, you also played for the Charleston Marlins in the International League. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, I, I went there from uh, I went there from Tulsa to uh, Charleston, <laughs> and uh, they had me hang around the uh, Tulsa until I could qualify for the batting championship because I was leading the league. Uh, in hitting, and uh, so I waited. I, you know, I stayed in Tulsa for a few more days, and then I went to Charleston, West Virginia, and uh, a guy by the name of Phil Linz, uh utility fielder for the uh, New York Yankees, actually ended up hitting 349, and to my 342. So I came in second in the league in hitting. But uh, yeah, I went to uh, Charleston, West Virginia, and uh, continued. Playing pretty well down there. I think I hit 310 down there, if I'm not mistaken. You did 310 in 52 games, 10 doubles. So you know, a solid performance. And that team contained, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, Joe Morgan, Tim McCarver, uh, Maxville, uh, and those players. Um, how did you get along with those teammates? Well, I, I you know, everything was so, somewhat new to me, and, and uh, knowing I knew some of the guys from the spring training, but. But really not well, and you know McCarver was just a great guy, a great competitor. Uh, Joe Morgan was a uh, a journeyman third baseman, played uh, a little bit at, with the Cleveland Indians at one point, and we became very good friends. And uh, we had John Glenn, and we had Toothpick Jones, and and uh, some real some real guys that uh, were were veterans, if you will, and. Uh, I remember playing against Suitcase Simpson, not Suitcase Simpson, but uh, a big lumbering first baseman for the Rochester Red Wings at that point. Uh, 
and I'm trying to remember his name, but uh, it'll come to me. I asked him one time, uh, geez, uh, when you retire, how long will it be before you can collect your pension? He said, next year, which meant he was at least 45 when he was still playing at AAA level, which was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then we go to the 62-63. Now here, you're playing for the Atlanta Crackers. This is the AAA uh, division. And you're playing for Harry Walker. Uh, how is Harry Walker? Harry, Harry had a philosophy. Harry was quite the talker. He had a philosophy, if you throw enough bull crap on the wall, something's got to stick. And I'll never forget that, that kind of a comment from him. If you, if you talk enough and you talk enough baseball and you try to inform guys how to play the game, something will stick in your head and you'll be a better ball player. And to, to that end, I, I think Harry was a good manager and uh, I enjoyed playing for him. He was, he was a good guy and he, he actually won a batting title here in uh, Philadelphia, I believe, back in the uh, late 40s. And then Richie Ashburn took his job the next year and Harry was traded. Oh, yeah, no, Harry, you know, always respected in the baseball world. So, uh, now, yeah, you did well that year, 62, 63, batting almost 300. Um, so, now, your name, along with Broglio Bobby Shantz, is remembered in the, in the baseball history books for that three-man trade to the Cubs for Lou Brock and two others. What was your reaction going to Chicago? Well, here I am laying in the bed in Houston, and I get a phone call about uh, 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I take the call, and, and Bing Devine is on the phone uh, saying that uh, we traded you with two other ball players, uh, as you mentioned, Bobby Shantz and Ernie Brolio. You're going to the Chicago Cubs, uh, so pack your stuff, and we have a car waiting for you. <laughs> it was a shock. I was absolutely shocked uh, because uh, – I was traded, my understanding is I was traded at 2 o'clock in the morning on the 16th of June. Well, the trade deadlines ends at uh, 12 o'clock midnight on June 15th. So they, they traded me two hours after the deadline, along with Bobby and, uh, and Ernie. And uh, we go to Chicago. I drive with my wife. I go home to St. Louis. We pack up our car. We drive to Chicago, which isn't that far a drive. So we get there, and uh, obviously Chicago, they only played a day ball at that time. I get to the Chicago Cubs, and they said, uh, get your uniform on. We need a pinch hitter. And <laughs> there I am. I just drove uh, whatever the distance was from St. Louis to Chicago, and now I'm in a uniform, and I'm pinch hitting against Ed Roebuck, I think his name was, a pitcher for the, uh, for the Dodgers back in the day. And I walk. So I was happy to walk, <laughs> actually, <laughs> after the drive and getting into the uniform. and It was, it was a shock. Uh, and, and then the big name in the get trade was Ernie Brolio. And the big name, for, as it turned out, for the Cubs going to the Cardinals was Lou Brock. And Lou Brock became a Hall of Famer, and he had a wonderful career. And, uh, and the rest is history about that. One of the guys in the trade happened to be my... Uh, an usher in my wedding in Tulsa as he was a pitcher on the Tulsa Oilers when I played there in, in 1961. So it was, it was, uh, it was quite to do, but I, I enjoyed Chicago. We, we ended up in 10th place and the Cardinals ended up winning the world series. Man, but I got to tell you, Doug, I mean, you were on your way to, to being the, the Cubs, the, you know, the regular right fielder, but didn't you, uh, did you suffer a finger injury during that time? Interesting that you would know that. I, uh, I was playing in uh, Houston, and I slid in the second base, and uh, uh, the shortstop for Houston came across the bag with a ball and a double play ball, and apparently I did not get my hands down fast enough as I slid into the base, and uh, the ball ticked my, the end of my little finger, and it tore the joint back. And uh, I was on the disabled list then for 30 days uh, with that injury. And it kind of uh, interrupted uh, what could have been a, uh, a good career for me in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, but, but also now 65 in Chicago, uh, I mean, you, you, you became the, the regular right fielder. I mean, you, you batted close to like 405, 406 that, that, that season in spring training. Yes, yes. Um, 
Uh, that's uh, good information, and uh, I knew I, I did well in spring training, and uh, and actually just uh, just to, uh, as we talked here, Brian, I, I was the center fielder, starting center fielder that year, and uh, I I just uh, my first at bat was against the St. Louis Cardinals in in Chicago, and the pitcher of all people was Bob Gibson, and oh, wow. my first at bat I, I hit a shot off Gibson and hit the top of the wall. In, in Chicago in right field, and I got a double out of it. So I missed a home run off Gibson by about a foot. But uh, that was a good feeling, to be, uh, be honest with you. Man, so then 66 comes around, and you trade it to the Phillies for outfielder Wes Covington. Now, your reaction to that, Doug? Uh, you were, you, were you upset? Well, um, it, was, it was a little bit like coming home. I, was, uh, I, I did not have... The good year that I was hoping to have in uh, in Chicago, and uh, uh, Leo DeRocher was the manager of the Chicago Cubs. He was appointed that winter, and uh, they elected to trade me and uh, and get uh, Wes Covington. And uh, you, when you when you're traded as a player, you always have to think, well, somebody somebody maybe these this team doesn't want you, but somebody else does. So I came to Philadelphia, and uh, the manager was Gene Mock, uh, and uh, I was notified of that trade by John Quinn. I was uh, at Syracuse working on my, uh, let's see, I was thinking I was working on my master's degree and uh, teaching, uh, substitute teaching to make some money, because we never made the big money that they're making today. Uh, so I needed I needed a job because by then I, I had uh, children and and the light, the rest is history. But you always you always want to think about wherever you're going. Somebody somebody needs you. Somebody wants you. And uh, I I what I did was I came to Philadelphia. I bought a home, uh, and so my kids had some uh, solid ground to be on. And uh, I ended up being uh, mainly a left-handed pinch hitter for the. Or excuse me for the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, you know, with the Phillies, you know, just reading, looking at your record here, I mean, you did, you, you did, uh, you tied the major league record in '66 uh, with three straight pinch doubles, right? Pinch hit doubles, five straight yeah. pinch hits versus the Cubs in '66. So you made some records uh, as soon as you came into the Phillies. Well, and that that was a good feeling because they had traded me, and uh, Leo DeRocher mm-hmm. was the manager, and. Uh, yeah, I was I was uh, happy about that, and it's it's still a a record that stands. At least I'm tied in a record, and uh, I and I enjoyed it. And I also uh, hit a pinch hit home run off Fergie Jenkins in the uh, top of the eighth inning in Chicago. <clears throat> that was in 1968, however, and uh, uh, they had the Phillies had sent me down to. Well, we'll get into that in a minute. But I hit a. I hit a uh, pinch hit home run off Fergie Jenkins to win a game for Chris Short uh, when I was with the Phillies. You did. Yes, you did. Now, um, all right, so then 66, you, you're playing for the Phillies 66 to 68. Now, from what I understand, you were going to play in 69, but you decided not to. Is that is that right? Well, in 69, I, I, I probably would have played again, but the uh, Phillies were going to outright me in terms of of where I was going to be performing, they had their Triple A team in San Diego in '69, and they were going to outright me to that team. But by then, I had three children and one in school, and uh, I elected to uh, retire rather than go to. Uh, I said uh, I said uh, San Diego, but it was really Eugene, Oregon, was their Triple A team. San Diego came into the league in in '69 as a new major league ball club, and uh, I could I could have maybe been picked up by the new clubs. I think it was uh, San Diego and uh, Montreal, I believe, came in uh, during that period of time. But I, I elected. Uh, I was having some issues with my knee from football the years earlier, and I elected to retire and. The, probably the biggest reason, uh, Brian, was because you need five years in the major leagues at that time to qualify for the major league pension, which is a wonderful pension. And uh, now today it, it changed to four years, but today you need about a month to qualify for a small pension. But 
uh, that was probably the biggest uh, reason for me to retire. Uh, in 68, I started the year in San Diego, which was uh, AAA at that time, prior to their getting to be a major league club the following year. And uh, Ruley Carpenter owned the Philadelphia Phillies. And he said, Doug, if you go down there and help some of the younger guys, we'll make sure you come up. Yeah, I know you need 22 days for the pension, which was very, very important and still remains one of my sources of income, candidly, uh, for, uh, for my life. And uh, so I went down there, helped the Phillies, had a decent year. I came back up, I believe, in August, maybe, and uh, I got about 40 days, so I had enough to qualify. So and I, I had, had like a... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say that uh, in the interim period, I had earned a master's degree from Syracuse University, so I was either going to go into teaching and be a coach or... Lo and behold, a good friend of mine asked me to come into business with him, and uh, I became a, a sales manager and uh, personnel director. And uh, then at the end of my career, for the last 13 years, I was uh, vice president of sales and marketing. So it, it turned out to be a, a good omen for me to uh, get out at that time and and uh, move on with my life uh, in another direction. And my last question, uh, Doug, uh, your greatest National League thrill would have to be what? Well, I, I guess probably the first home run I, I, I ever hit in the major leagues. I didn't hit many. I only hit 12. Uh, but it was off uh, Vernon Deacon Law, who was a very good pitcher for the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. Unfortunately, we, gave, we lost the game 17-3, uh, to 3, and that was, that was in St. Louis, and I, and I hit it up uh, on top of the uh, deck in St. Louis. Uh, that was a thrill. Pinch hitting and, and hitting my uh, home run uh, off uh, uh, another Hall of Famer, uh, Fergie Jenkins. That was a thrill when I hit the home run in Chicago and won the game for Chris Short. And so I've, I've had some thrills. The, the, the big thing was playing the game. Playing the game, I love to play and enjoying my life in baseball. Well, Doug, you did a great job. I really appreciate your time. Uh, really an honor for me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Brian. It was a pleasure for me to talk baseball with you. Uh, likewise, and you take care of yourself. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That was uh, Doug Clements, who played for the Cardinals, Cubs, and the Philadelphia Phillies during the 1960s. Until next week, happy collecting to all.